Good morning, fourth grade. How are you? I'm glad everyone's with me, and I'm sure everybody has their teeth brushed, their hair brushed. Good to go. You're in the right frame of school mind. We're going to be reading chapter 15 today. If you remember in chapters 13 and 14, what happened? Oh, I remember chapter 14. Um, Matt was telling Etienne the, the story about Noah's Ark. And Etienne said, oh, we have a similar story about Gluskabe, we assume was like God to us, and had a similar story about, similar to Noah's Ark. So that was how we left with chapter 14. All right, chapter 15. I keep waiting for the family to come, don't you? I keep thinking, okay, this is going to be the chapter the family's going to show up. And they haven't. So we're, remember how many chapters are in this book? There's 25 chapters. Um, and we are on chapter 15. Let me bring this up to you. So remember last year we read Because of Winn-Dixie, and it has 26 chapters in it. This book only has 25 chapters, and Winn-Dixie has, I think, 186 pages. This only has 135 pages, but it's a lot more words. Did you notice? Fourth grade books, a lot more words on the page. Winn-Dixie doesn't have nearly as many, so that's why it takes us longer with this one. There's just, they cram more words in. Just like with your big fourth grade reading books, there's a lot more words on each page than there were in the third grade. All right, chapter 15. <clears throat> oh, we've got the word thicket. Thicket is um, like a ground covering that's very thick, like bushes on the ground, kind of hard to walk through. Sometimes there's thorns, all kinds of crazy stuff in a thicket. On the day of their greatest adventure, oh, their greatest adventure, Etienne had come without his dog, so there was no warning. Matt was in fine spirits that day because he had managed by a magnificent stroke of luck to hit a rabbit with his bow and arrow. Oh, that's good. So he was able to hit a rabbit. It was the first time this had happened, and it was more the rabbit's doing than his own. The silly creature had just sat there and let him take careful aim. All the same, he was pleased with himself and even more pleased that Etienne had been there to see it. When the boys, remember, he's always trying to win Etienne's approval. When the boys decided to visit the beaver dam again, Matt was unwilling to leave the rabbit behind in case some thieving animal should discover it. He was walking behind Etienne, swinging the rabbit carelessly by the ears, as Etienne always did, when the Indian suddenly halted, his whole body tensed. Matt could see nothing unusual, and he had opened his mouth to speak when Etienne silenced him with a jerk of his hand. <clears throat> Then he heard a sound in the underbrush ahead. Not a rustle, like a grouse or a snake, not a trapped animal. This was a stirring of something moving slowly and heavily. He felt a cold prickle in his stomach. He stood beside Etienne, his own muscles tight, scarcely breathing. A low bush bent sideways. Through the leaves, a brown head thrust itself bigger than that of a dog and shaggier. It was a small bear cub. Matt could see the little eyes peering at them curiously, the brown nose wrinkling at the strange smell of human boy. The little animal looked so comical that Matt almost laughed out loud. St! Etienne warned under his breath. There was a crashing of bush and a low snarling growl. An immense paw, immense means huge, an immense paw reached through the thicket and tumbled the cub over and out of sight. In its place loomed a huge brown shape. Bursting through the leaves was a head three times as big as the cubs. No curiosity in those small eyes, only an angry reddish gleam. Somehow Matt had the sense not to run. He stood frozen on the path. A bear could overtake a running man in a few bounds, and this one only took two and this one was only two bounds away. The bear's head moved slowly from side to side, its heavy body brushed aside the branches as though they were cobwebs, meaning they very easily moved the branches away. It swayed, shifting its weight from one foot to the other. Slowly it rose on its hind legs. Are you picturing this? Matt could see the wicked curving claws. Some of you, oh yeah, like on the on the cover of the book, on the cover of my book, they're all different, but they've got that 
picture of the big bear reaching up with his big paws. <clears throat> Matt would never know why he acted as he did. He couldn't remember thinking at all, only staring with numb horror at the creature about to charge. So this bear is getting ready to come after these two boys. Somehow he did move. He swung the dead rabbit by its ears and hurled it straight at the bear's head. The tiny body struck the bear squarely on its nose. With a jerk of her head, the bear shook it off as though it were a buzzing mosquito. The rabbit flopped useless to the ground. The bear did not even bother to look down at it. She had been distracted for only an instant, but in that instant, something flashed through the air. There was a sharp twang and the dull thud of a blow. Just between the eyes of the bear, the shaft of Atien's arrow quivered. As the waving forepaws began to lower, a second arrow struck just below the bear's shoulder. The great head shuddered and sank toward the ground. With a wild yell, Etienne sprang forward and thrust his knife deep just behind his first arrow. Still scarcely aware that he had moved at all, Matt leaped up after him. Jerking his own knife from his belt, he sank it into the brown fur. His blow had been misplaced, but it was not needed. The bear's sides were heaving, the boy stood watching, and in a few moments it lay still. Matt stared down at the creature in horror. The fearsome yellow teeth were still bared in a snarl. Saliva and blood dribbled down from the open jaws. The little eyes that had glittered so savagely were filmed over. The long, sharp claws hung powerless, clotted with pawed up earth. Now, it's kind of gross in that they killed the bear, but did they have a choice? The bear was getting ready to attack them, and Matt wasn't even thinking, but he threw the rabbit at the bear. Now, obviously, that's not going to do much, but it distracted the bear long enough for Etienne to be able to shoot with his arrow, so that really helped out. <clears throat> now that there was nothing to fear, Matt felt his knees shaking. He hoped that Etienne would not notice, and he managed a wide grin to hide his trembling. He doesn't want Etienne to know he was scared and nervous. But Etienne did not grin back. He stood over the bear and he began to speak. Slowly and solemnly in his own tongue, he spoke for some time. What were you saying? Matt demanded when the speaking was over. I tell bear I do not want to kill, Etienne answered. Indian not kill she bear with cub. I tell bear we did not come here to hunt. So he's telling the bear that he was sorry he had to kill her because she had a baby cub and he normally wouldn't do that but he only did it because he had to protect himself he was going to get killed if he didn't do it but he's saying that he's sorry he normally wouldn't have done that again you know speaking to the bear because he feels at one with nature but it might have killed us both maybe i ask bear to forgive that i must kill well i'm mighty thankful that you did matt said stoutly he was about to say that he had never been so scared in his life, but he thought better of it. He doesn't want Etienne to know how scared he was. Etienne looked at him, and his solemnness suddenly dissolved in a grin. You move quick, he said, like Indian. Holy cow, what did Etienne just say? He told Matt, you move quick like an Indian? That is a huge compliment. Oh my gosh. Matt felt his cheeks turn red. Well, you killed him, he said honestly, yet he knew that he had had a part. He had given Etienne just that instant in which to notch his arrow. So wow, for Etienne to have noticed that, it just makes Matt beam with pride. He's like, yeah. Etienne nudged the bear with his toe. Small, he said, just same fat, good for eat. Small, that monstrous creature? It certainly was too big for two boys to carry. It appeared that Etienne had no mention of trying. Belong squaw now, he said. I go tell. Now remember squaw or the women, so he's saying, I, I killed it, now it's the squaw's work. You mean a squaw is going to carry that heavy thing? Cut up meat, then carry. Squaw work, Etienne answered. It was plain that he had done the man's work and was finished with it. The cub, Matt remembered now, 
It was nowhere in sight. Etan shook his head. Let Cub go, he said. When Sigwan come again, him plenty big to eat. Take rabbit, Etienne reminded him. Matt looked with distaste at the rabbit, almost covered by the bear's heavy paw, the fur matted and bloody. He would rather not have touched it, but obediently he pulled it out. It was his dinner, after all, and he knew that in Etienne's world, everything that was killed must be used. The Indians did not kill for sport. If they killed an animal, it was for a reason. When Etienne had disappeared into the forest, Matt still stood looking down at the first bear he had ever seen. He felt resentful. Etienne had killed the bear, of course. It was his by right, but Matt would have liked just a small share of the meat or even one of those big claws to show his father. Then he remembered the Indian boy's tribute. He had moved fast like an Indian. That would have to be share enough. So he's a little disappointed because uh, Etienne apparently is if the meat will go to Etienne's tribe because <clears throat> he said the squaws would come take care of it. And, and so Matt's a little disappointed that he didn't get just a little bit of it to share the meat or have the claw or whatever. But then he said he remembered Etienne's compliment saying, you moved quick like an Indian. And Matt was like, okay, that's going to have to do. That was a pretty good compliment, so I'll take it. So uh, that's the end of chapter 13. Now, their relationship is really coming along. Think of where they started. They could, they disliked each other so much they could hardly look at one another. And now here they are, they've killed a bear together. They teamed up working together and killed this bear. So whether they like it or not, they are forming a friendship with one another. And I think, um, you know, Matt has always been very, um, feeling like what Etienne can do is very admirable. And he feels like now after today, maybe Etienne's starting to think some of what, what Matt can do is pretty good too. Okay, so next time we meet, which will be next week, um, we'll be on chapter 16. So maybe the family will come? I don't know. How long has it been? It's been a long time. So they should be coming soon, I hope. Make your predictions. Think about it. Remember, you can read ahead, but mum's the word. Don't tell anybody. I hope you like it enough that you're like, you want to read or that you're curious about what's going to happen next. It's, it's kind of interesting to think about, even though some of that stuff kind of gory. I'm kind of like, Bleh. Okay, you all be good. Be good for mom and dad. Helpful, sweet, and I will see you next time.